I'm 87 years of age. I matriculated when I was 20 years old because I lost three years of schooling. I passed standard six in Greece in 1941. And the country I was born in was invaded by the Germans. And my father and I escaped with seven New Zealand soldiers that had, had come to Greece as allies of the United Kingdom. And uh, we left in a small boat from Greece to go to Crete, one of the islands in the Mediterranean. We didn't get there because we were picked up in the middle of the sea by a British ship, warship called HMS Kimberley, who told us that we could no longer go to the island we had informed because it was occupied by the Germans without our knowing about it. But they picked us up. They told us that they would take us to Alexandria in Egypt and we mustn't worry. Uh, we will be looked after. My father was put into a refugee camp in Cairo and I was put in an exclusively Greek orphanage in Alexandria. We only stayed there for three months because Egypt was in danger of falling to the Germans. And people with children in the refugee camp said, no, they must be evacuated. Being refugee once was enough. Rommel, the great German uh, general, was no less than 50 miles outside Cairo and Egypt was in danger of falling. We were put on a very large ship, the island of France, with 1,500 prisoners of war of Italian origin that were brought to South Africa. And uh, uh, also uh, 145 refugees and about 100 people that had got sand on their lungs in the desert of North Africa, who came to the newly established small uh, uh, hospital called Baragwanath, which is now a massive hospital, but it was a special uh, hospital, small hospital built by the Allies. My father got a job as a laborer here at, at uh, uh, Pretoria Isco, which was making munitions for the war. And he took me, together with uh, a Greek gentleman who acted as interpreter, to Pretoria Boys. I lasted three days because I couldn't speak a word of English and they said there was no point in my stay. They suggested that I should go to the Young Man's Christian <coughs> Association uh, f uh, place in Jeppe in Johannesburg. We went there and said, sorry, he's too young. You have to be 18. You have to be a young man, not a child. <laughs> and uh, uh, there was a Greek school, but only a primary school in Malvern. They tried to get me in there. And they said, no, he's already passed standard six. We only go up to standard five. We, do we don't want him here. He's over age. And I was left as a shop assistant for a period of almost three years in Jeppe. 
But my picture and that of my father was in the Sunday Times telling the story that I have told you of how we got out of Greece. And I served a young woman that came into the shop and she looked at me and looked at me again and said, are you the boy whose picture was in the newspaper? I said, yes. I said, what school do you go to? I said, I don't go to school. She said, what? She took on the boss and threatened to r report him to the inspector for uh, employing underage uh, pupils. And uh, she said, I'm a teacher at Baldwin Junior High. I, I'm going to come here, it was a Friday afternoon, I'm going to come here on Monday at 7.30, make sure that he's wearing his best, that you will buy him a uniform as well. Uh, and I will pick him up for my school. Cecilia Feinstein. I, she was a standard six teacher, I repeated standard six, with all the help. She helped me, she asked me to come to her house, to help me personally uh, with homework, which I did. I passed standard seven and uh, I was going to go to standard eight. She became engaged to be married to a pharmacist in the Eastern Cape. And she took it upon herself to go to a high school, high, Athlon High School in Bez Valley. And I must be transferred from the junior high school to the high school under the protection of uh, Miss Frida Greenberg, the senior English teacher, <laughs> who bought me a dictionary <laughs> and told me, George, I don't mind people making <coughs> mistakes, uh, but you've got no idea how to, to write. I don't want you to write anything in your essay that you are not sure of the <laughs> of the spelling, here is this dictionary, you look it up and get on. Anyway, I, my father was ambitious, he wanted me to become a doctor. And uh, I had terrible matric results, E in English, E in Afrikaans, E in signs, and a couple of D's and one C. Got a letter from law school, sorry, you're not good enough for the school. Uh, and I said to the woman at the desk of the medical school, what am I to do? My father wants me to become a doctor. Yeah. And uh, she said, why don't you go and register as an art student? Take at least four subjects. And if you pass them, apply to do medicine and you'll have a good chance if you do well in the four subjects. I took six subjects at Wits University in the arts fair. I started enjoying learning. I was bored stiff at school. But what was happening at the university was really inspiring for me. I wrote 
the supplementary examinations because I was admitted conditionally to my writing uh, uh, English and science. Uh, and if we got, I got better marks, I could stay on. If I failed, I had to leave the university. You've got to be lucky, you know. One of the reasons why I got an A in English is that I didn't listen to the teacher. She said, you don't know who's going to mark your paper. Don't choose a controversial subject because you don't know what the views of the marker are. I've got the English paper. The first choice of a subject, a quotation from Karl Marx. Man is born free, but is everywhere in chains. And I actually wrote a political treatise in my 20th year. And I don't think that the man that marked my papers <laughs> was uh, very pleased with it. And this is why I, I thought that I got an E. <laughs> but you've got to be lucky. We had a poem at the university in a tutorial by a man called Hopkins. And the heading was, Margaret, are you grieving over golden groves and leafing? Are you grieving over this? Are you grieving over that? Are you grieving? And the last line, it was a sonnet. Margaret, it is Margaret you grieving for. And we spent the whole lesson analyzing this poem. I walk into the supplementary examination. First question, the poem is set out about Margaret, discuss. <laughs> and I was able to really go to town in repeating what I had learned from the lecture in English. Got the results, a B for English. <laughs> you know, the examiner must have been very, very, uh, very, very uh, pleased that I knew who Hopkins was, that he was a monk of the Catholic Church, and he was a lonely man, and there was this, that, and the other, and this is, uh, was his personal life, and this is what he did. Anyway, so, okay, I'm at Witz. 1948. Do you know that there was a fundamental change in government in South Africa in 1948? What happened? Hmm? Tell me, what happened in 1948 politically? Hmm? Yes? Um, that is when apartheid started. Well, yes, the Nationalist Party, which made apartheid its official. Right. There was a small number of black students at Wits University, particularly in medical school, where we, where the students, before I got there, had established a fund for black doctors to be trained at me medical school. And when the nationalists came to power, they threatened to close the doors of its university to black students. And we protested, and I took part in those protests. And uh, when Dr. Malan was asked what was, what was happening at this university, he said to, his, to Parliament, that was a small group of leftists at the university that were making all this trouble. 
but the authorities had assured him that things will improve and the small group of leftists uh, will be sidelined. The next day there was a protest meeting in the Great Hall at West University. And I full-heartedly made a speech, which really, I think, had an effect on my life. Not very pleasant, because I said, if wanting equal treatment to our black fellow students makes me a leftist, I'm proud to be one. The next morning, in the Transvaler, the leading Africana newspaper, the headline on the first page, Lynx has sent and trot star up. You understand that? Yes. The translation of leftists and I'm proud of it. I'm sure that that became exhibit A in my file with the security police. <laughs> I was refused citizenship. I uh, couldn't uh, become an articled clerk because you had to be a South African citizen. And I had to become an advocate. You didn't, you, you, you need not have been uh, a citizen to become an advocate, but an attorney, the law said that it had to be uh, uh, an article clerk, and only South African citizens. Anyway, that led to infamy in some quarters, but I gained the support of the students at the university. I was elected on four consecutive years as a member of the Students' Representative Council. I became a leader to go to Cape Town for the uh, New South National Union of South African Students. And I got to the bar, <laughs> and uh, the question was, could a Greek citizen become an advocate and take an oath of allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen? And it was a moot point, of course. Josh Slava was three years ahead of me at the university. He was already an advocate. I went to him and I said, uh, Joe, you came from Lithuania. Uh, and you were admitted as an advocate. He said, yes, because they said that Lithuania didn't exist anymore. It had been occupied by the Soviet Union. Uh, and he said, you know, for a Lithuanian Jew and a communist at that, to tell two South African judges that there's nothing wrong for a Greek to take an oath of allegiance to the, Her Majesty the Queen is not a good thing. We must get a Paka Englishman to take your case. Yeah.